And so we come back to Abby. Oh, shoot. Already infected. Great. Infected. I hear quite a few of them. What? Oh, no, 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 no. Oh, that was a big fall. Oh, shit. Shit. Oh, there's a lot of them. Oh, there's a lot of them. Oh, no, that's a lot more of them. Ah! I don't know if I'm going in the right direction. Ah, and she's gonna get hypothermia. they clearing out? Oh. Were they clearing out the warehouse that all the zombies came out of? up with us we gotta warn everyone come back with a cleanup crew we gotta live through this first watch your windows these soft fishes are everywhere we gotta move get to the door capable. Abby's ripped. Just punching infected like that. Up there, the window. That's our way out. You see a way up there? Here, use this. Uh, hey, girl. Push it up under the cart. We're getting inside. I'll get the gondola to the window. You two keep those infected. Clicker. Oh. Nice. Get this 
So just like the uh, David and Ellie horde in the coal mines in the first game, I think our plan is going to be to let Joel take care of as many of them as possible and then focus on the clickers. Okay. Smokes. Oh. close to us. That was close. exactly what Abby wanted. What was this one? When I was 12. I found a skateboard. Uh-oh. And I hit it. <laughs> I tried to get on it. <laughs> and it shot right out from underneath me. <laughs> Wait, how did you get the scar? I fell on my knife. <laughs> crazy okay um the chemical burn hmm. hate to have myself what uh Color a bite mark over here. I got jumped by an infected when I was 14, and it turns out I'm immune, so it healed with a ring of fucked up teeth marks and cysts. And Ow! Fuck you. Well, uh, hey, <laughs> I told you a real fucking story. I did tell you a real fucking story. Are you on a bite mark? <laughs> Tragic. You hear that? Jesse? <laughs> just stay there, okay? Are you just, okay? Just, will What's you wait, going on? please? What? Just turn around. What are you doing? Are you kidding me? You're supposed to. 
supposed to be on patrol. There's a blizzard outside. Is that weed? Why are you here? People are counting on you, you get that? What we do matters. Well then why aren't you at the fucking lookout? Because Tommy and Joel didn't show up. What do you mean? We waited for them for an hour. I was looking for their horses when I saw lights. Maybe they just went back to town. Oh, Grandma Police, no way. How much of their region have you covered? I'm not sure. Then we split up. Go at it from different sides. And we can cover the whole thing in a few hours. I don't like you riding solo. We don't know what's out there. Exactly. What if they need help? Okay, I'll head west. Dina can take south, and you come from the east. But be smart about it, yeah? Yeah. Remember, they wanted to kidnap someone from Jackson in order to figure out where the person they were looking for was. Let's get inside! So the tension in this scene is very uh, well communicated to the audience, even if Tommy and Joel don't realize it. This way. Just passing through. Uh, you two live nearby? We do. A few hours down the hill. Y'all should come back with us, restock before you head out. Appreciate it. I'm Mel, by the way. Tommy. This is my brother. Joe. Don't act like you heard of us or something. Because they have. Laura, all clear? He's out. Put him against the wall. Tommy. Oh, his leg. Get off me. Oh. Say whatever speech you got rehearsed. We'll get this over with. Trying to get his leg up. Do it. Stupid old man. 
You don't get to rush this. Uh, so brutal. So we know it is where uh, I feel okay. it, we're at the point Joel! where uh, Tommy! it's clear Tommy! Joel was in fact the person Abby was looking for. And we can probably Joel! surmise that uh, despite them wearing these WLF patches that we're not familiar with, uh, we know that they got information about where what? these two might be. You're okay. You're okay. Which implies it might be from someone who knows Tommy, which is to say they're probably fireflies. Oh, thank goodness. And so this is the reckoning Joel? Tommy? for Joel's actions at the end of the first game. Outside. We didn't think anyone was going to show up. What the hell did you expect? We got to get out of here before the whole town's on top of us. You're done. You won't die one, right? End it. Now. Joel, get up. Joel, fucking get up. Please stop! Please don't do this! Joel, please get up! No! 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 <laughs> I'm sorry. Jesse! They're down here!
Can I sit down, please? Wants to make sure you're eating. She can't stop us. Mm. We have the guys that we would need to do this smart. We'd be leaving Jackson vulnerable. So they just get to get away with this? Nobody wants that. Yeah, but that's what's happening. What if we get hit by hunters again? Is this you talking or is this her? That's a valid point. If it were you or me, Joel would be halfway to Seattle already. No, he wouldn't. He absolutely fucking would be. Well, hell, we don't even know for certain that they're from Seattle. Washington Liberation Front. That's what you said was on those patches. What if they stole those jackets? That's... That was a WLF move. What are you doing? You know what? I'm leaving tomorrow. And if you want to come with me, great. You have no idea what you're walking into. You don't know how large that group is, how armed. I don't care. You can't talk me out of this. Give me a day. I'll talk tomorrow. Okay. There's got to be some folks you can spare. Maybe she won't budge. <laughs> well, I'll figure something out. One day. Please. Tommy wants to go, but he also knows Maria is right. And so he's bargaining to find a way to stop it all from happening, even though it's welling up inside of him. house there for a reason. So we know, uh, you know, Maria is right. They can't leave Jackson undefended. Uh, they can't spare that many people. 
especially with a horde around. But both Ellie and Tommy are just slowly being consumed by this. You can already see it on their faces. Ellie's eyes swollen from crying. Her facial expressions just completely changed. So we have this horrible thing lingering over uh, Jackson without any real easy answer. And Ellie is raring for a fight. Tommy is also just ready to go. But it seems like he's trying to find a reason not to. And I think it's because... I couldn't get to the horses. Looks like Tommy took them. Ma Marie's got the stables locked down. <sighs> Fucking Tommy. I'll figure something else out, won't I? A car or a horse or something. I'll go. This makes killing the Sierra a lot harder. And it's gonna get harder. You can still change your mind, you know? I know. I just don't want you to feel like you have to. A lot of support. Where'd you get your backpack? I hid it by the east gates. I figured you'd want to step out that way. So what I was about to say is Tommy's looking for a reason not to go because he knows the second that they leave, you know, Ellie and him are in immediate danger and it's not healthy for them. It's a horrible uh, quest for vengeance. It's basically being started. And all of this was for vengeance to begin with. We know Abby was here to take out Joel specifically. They all were. So despite this, Tommy steals a horse and leaves because he knows there's no way he's going without doing that. He understands Maria is right. And he also doesn't want to enable Ellie. So we have this grieving mourning period. This very still situation here. Funerals are like this. And it looks like all of Jackson is mourning. go get it. Oh, that's great. Okay. I'm not going. Come on. I'll hang out down here. Thanks. Rooting through a loved one's house after they pass is a very kind of awkward, quiet time kind of feels like time is frozen honestly so we see here even with ellie and jules somewhat strained relationship they still were in contact they still did care for each other So this is referencing an event we haven't seen yet, but this is actually a really important, I think, uh, document that kind of sets the tone for everything that just happened. So the Deinonychus, Terrible Claw. If you were to visit Wyoming 115 to 108 million years ago, you might have had the misfortune of running into a Deinonychus. 
standing about five feet tall, 11 feet long, this Cretaceous period carnivore was long considered to be a vicious hunter. Fast moving with a sickle-like claw on both hind feet, it would likely pounce on its prey and tear into it while still alive. Much of this is speculation. It's not entirely clear how this theropod hunted, or even if it was exceptionally fast. Paleontologists has, have, as of yet, still not found a complete fossil specimen. When researchers are unsure about the missing pieces in the puzzle of what a dinosaur was, they fill in the gaps with similar dinosaurs that we do know more about from the same family tree. For instance, Deinonychus shares its family tree, Dromaeosauridae, with close relatives Velociraptor and Microraptor. The Dromaeosauridae are, or running lizards, are commonly called the raptors. They are fast-running feathered theropods found globally during the Cretaceous period. Feathers? For many years, dinosaurs were thought to be scaly, lizard-like, cold-blooded monsters. But fossilized theropods in the raptor family have been found with feather-like structures surrounding their bodies. So far, no remains of a Deinonychus with intact feather structures have been found. However, we can still extrapolate a very high likelihood that they had them, due to the presence of these feathers in Velociraptor and Microraptor remains. We can see how complicated paleontology can be. Scientists in this field rarely have a full skeleton to work from. It's usually bits and pieces that they use to try and tell a whole story and build a picture of who these ancient animals were, how they looked, and how they behaved. As our knowledge grows, our picture changes. I bet you're see you've seen lots of images of dinosaurs looking like scaly lizards. What do you think of the new picture we have of a more bird-like animal covered in feathers? Learn more about our feathered friends in the Stairwell Feather Exhibit. So, how does this random book about dinosaurs relate to The Last of Us, and why is it important right here? I think that this placed here is a very specific reference and is a kind of parallel to Joel himself. So we have the Deinonychus, the terrible claw. Uh, it is a hunter. It is a species that we thought did horrible things to survive, pounced on its prey, ate them while still alive. Over time, we've seen bits and pieces of its story. Never all of it at once, but we've spent some time with it, and we fill in the gaps and learn more about it. Not just from its fossils, but from things similar to it by contrast to people like Tommy and Maria and Ellie. But with new information comes a new picture. Just like the Deinonychus, we used to think that Joel was more hardened, but we eventually grew to know him as caring and fatherly and parental. But underneath that parental figure, there still was the terrible claw lurking underneath, this thing that could create horrible tragedy. And now we've seen what kind of reckoning that tragedy can bring. So what do you think of this new picture we have of Joel? Do you like it more or less than before? family dinner. It looks like Kat is there too, possibly, or maybe Jesse. Kat being, I think, the girl uh, that was giving Ellie her tattoo in that picture that we saw in Ellie's house. Hmm. I love that coffee mug. Ooh. All right. My mouth tastes like iron. Wounds break open as I sing. Fretful, you were the soft twang of nylon, the smell of wood oil, 
oh, fretful guitar strings with within are brighter. Guitar, guitar strings with iron sound brighter. They mistook your resonance and left me with dissonance and left me with rust. All I have's our last conversation, looping like a chord progression, harmonies in blood. WLF, Washington Liberation Front, who are they? Tommy said her name was Abby. Why? He was just here. He hasn't even put away his plates. And now he's gone. And this is kind of our first glimpse at what Joel was like in Jackson. A fisherman. A guy who kept his house tidy. Lived a quiet life. Loved his family. Liked nice paintings. Joel and Tommy. It's a great painting. Uh, developers at Naughty Dog are just such incredible interior designers. They know how to make a video game environment look correct and just hit all the right notes. Make it look like a real place while also making it playable. All the promises at sundown, I meant them like the rest. A lot of nice guitars. Joel's a hobbyist. I mean, he tries to keep busy, right? He took up wood carving, using references and painting them himself. He had a gun safe, so he kept his gun in a safe. That's actually pretty responsible of him. I like this bear statue because it's one that we can see in Silver Lake in The Last of Us Part 1 um, while Ellie's captured and Joel is wandering through town. This asset is in the Part 1 remake. Really stellar stuff. Of course, he's got his power tools, which are a hot commodity here, apparently. It's interesting, Jackson likely has uh, running water, but it seems like it would be mostly cold, right? They, they have electricity, or at least some electricity. Um, they probably have to ration it. So boiling the water rather than running hot water probably makes a lot of sense for them. Also probably allows them to preserve it a little bit better. Keep sewage and uh, drains and stuff uh, unclogged. smell of a dead loved one's clothes it's really intense I think if you're of a certain age this hits really hard because it's incredibly relatable Again, another bathroom, probably less usable. Because it doesn't have the water heater in it, but. Joel, Ellie, and Shimmer. And yet you see life goes on outside. Jackson can't just stop. Patrols need to keep happening. Joel with reading glasses because he's getting older. An idiot's guide to space. Probably reading that because he knows Ellie really likes astronauts. All his records. His guitar. 
honestly, you know, he seems lonely, but good for him for keeping busy, right? The watch Sarah gave him on outbreak day, his birthday. The one-shot kill from part one, the most important gun in the game, the MVP. Okay. Yeah, it's just just come on down. Maria, I'm headed to Seattle. I wish I could let it go, but I can't have to bring these people to justice. Ellie's gonna try to come after me, but stop her. Take her guns, lock up the horses, maybe lock her up. Buy me some time so I can end this. Love you always, Tommy. He's gonna get himself killed. He should have taken me with him. You should have given us a group to go after those fuckers. I wish I could. You gotta try to lock me up? I prefer that you stay. That's not gonna fucking happen. I prefer that you stay, but I know you better. You going with her? Yeah. Then we're just gonna sneak out of here. Hmm? Yeah. On foot? Yeah. I told the savior to let you out. Grab some ammo, too. Thank you, Maria. Just, uh, do me a favor and bring my gun that's hiking home in one piece, please. Going, you're you're losing weight. It's a shitty situation for everyone, but Maria is an incredible leader. She clearly knows her people. She understands their emotional stakes. She knows she can't stop Ellie. <laughs> 